It's the Logan Power Show Inspirational and motivational It's the Logan Power Show Informational to help you grow Power Show. And now the host, Calvin Logan. Hey everybody, welcome to the Logan Power Show. It's me, your host, Calvin Logan. I thank you for watching another special episode here of the Logan Power Show. Uh, as we know, time is evolving and the clock is ticking. As we know, November is approaching us and this election is getting hotter and more interesting as time evolves. Uh, we got another incumbent that's coming in that he basically believes that he has the right person for the right fit let's welcome our good friend our very own dr curtis mayweather jr dr mayweather how you doing sir i'm good sir thank you so much calvin for extending the opportunity to talk about the platform today absolutely that's what we're here for uh now we know dr mayweather you, you declared um in the month of july july 20th to be exact July 25th, so like you kick off, get kick started. Uh, the big question is like you're coming in to this heavyweight fight and uh, you say you're the right candidate for. So tell us what in particular will make people say like you're the right fit that's going to change things in North Charleston, in your humble opinion? Oh, man, that's a great question. Well, you know, Calvin, um, I've been in around government for 27 years now. So I was a civil servant, um, as many of your listeners may know. I did work for the Space and Naval Warfare System Center for a period of time. Um, and prior to that, even in high school, I was working for organizations like the Department of Energy as a contractor. So I do understand how the wheels of government do move. But I, the reason why I believe I'm the right candidate for the job is number one, um, it's gonna be based on 27 years of progressive experience in and around government. I'm still a government contractor to this day. So I'm not unfamiliar walking the halls, of the Capitol buildings or spending time in the Washington Navy Yard. And I have been engaging with local polit politicians in the area when we came across problems in our business. But I believe that our approach is very unique. It's gonna be based on actionable experience. Unfortunately, many of our political leaders, not, not in from a city perspective, but typically from a ecosystem perspective, many of them have been future long-term um, policy makers and politicians. But I'm coming in, I think, with an outsider's perspective, which is going to give me a different perspective at tackling, I believe, some of the most pressing challenges facing North Charleston. Um, as you know, as you mentioned earlier, I do have a PhD. Um, so I have a I have a master's in project management. And a, a, a big part of the role of mayor is to be able to manage multiple projects at the same time. So ha having that background in project and program management. I believe is going to be key. And, and even further, I also have a PhD in management and I'm actually a nonprofit management scholar through Case Western Reserve University. So not only are we going to be to look at problems and how it actually impacts the citizens, we can also be able to look at, to look at from a research based perspective. So we can look at what has actually been done in other cities and use that as a model to build upon to solve the unique challenges of North Charleston. Great perspective. Uh, to capitalize on just piggyback off some of the questions, we know that in North Charleston, in the next four or five years, this is a shift and a move. What, you mean, what I mean by that is we know that with the expansion of Boeing, uh, North Charleston Air Force Base, uh, with Walmart uh, building that big $3 million square foot infrastructure that's close nearby, uh, with the acquisition, of Top Golf, uh, plus the Mercedes, and then also T-Mobile building their call center on Rivers Avenue, which did uh, fell through around 2018-2019. Um, the the responsibility of North Charleston as a whole is that the profitability is there, um, and it's very very vast and very gross. Um, with the way the infrastructure is going, way things are going, it seems that. When you think about Charleston, Somerville, Monts Corner, North North Charleston sort of smack dab in the middle, since we do have the uh, 
airport right there as well. What are like, I guess, if, if day one, given your first encounter as mayor, you mentioned that you're sort of a person that sort of is not afraid to bump heads with political leaders or get involved in things that's going on in Capitol Hill. What would one, one initiative you would want to see accomplished uh, as given the opportunity first term as mayor, in your humble opinion? Okay, awesome. Well, you know, the first role that we have to do before we tackle any of the community projects, which I recognize is of extreme importance, but the very first thing I'm going to do is get to know my current team. I need to make sure that I understand the team and we lay out a vision and mission that's very clear that my team can get around. So that's number one. So we have to make sure that we understand who's in the seats and understand that they understand what our new direction is going forward. Once that's in, once we once we are now starting to do a, a north south nod acro across the team, and bouncing ideas off each other that we can all get behind. So my job is going to be to organize, delegate, follow up, and support. But in that, there are five primary things that I would like to see happen in my first term as mayor. Number one, it's going to be economic development. Now, economic development is both large business and small business. It's going to be a short and a long game here. It's going to be some things we're going to be able to do on the outset very quickly, and it's going to be some things that, quite frankly, are going to take time. But from an but from an economic development perspective, I want to a create and cultivate. Now, by no means am I saying the government as mayor. Am I saying the government is going to do this? I'm not saying that. What I am saying is we want to create an environment where entrepreneurship can thrive. So I want to facilitate an environment where incubators and accelerators and venture capital and private equity is available to entrepreneurs in North Charleston. That's number one. So we have to create an ecosystem that supports that. Number two, we got to make sure that we really define our value proposition as a city so we can attract then larger um, jobs, bigger employees. We know that jobs is the lifeblood of any city. So I plan to put on my corporate, uh, my capture management, my business development hat and deploy our team to attract more businesses to North Charleston so we can create additional jobs and revenue opportunities, both from an employment base and from a subcontracting base for my employers in North Charleston. So that's that's of paramount importance to me. We are the most the, the wealthiest city in North Charleston. However, when I drive through North Charleston, I don't see that wealth exuded. We're the 73rd largest municipality in the country. Second initiative is crime. And we have to do these in parallel. And when I talk about crime, I'm not talking about just locking people up. Of course, if you commit a crime, you need to be held to the standards of the law to uh, to basically pay for the crime that was committed. However, while in prison, I want to make sure there's rehabilitation programs in place so that when offenders are released, they're hopefully better off than they were when they came in. We recognize prison sentences will vary based on the severity of the crime. We want to put rehabilitation programs in place. We want to partner um, with NGOs that are already doing this work and have a track record of success. We want to help. We want to create this public-private partnership or public um, non-NGO partnership where we can make sure that we can rehabilitate those that are non-violent offenders. We know that it's very difficult for uh, for individuals who have a prior uh, prior criminal record to get a job or to uh, really kind of get a second chance in society. So we want to put in programs that's going to facilitate that. Third is education. Now, as mayor of North Charleston, um, we don't have the uh, authority to do a whole lot there. However, in terms of making instant change, however, the thing that we will do and will continue doing is advocating with lawmakers to make sure that a lot of the bills that are currently being discussed in the General Assembly get the attention they need, because my first commitment is to the citizens of North Charleston. And I believe everyone has a right to a great education. Um, school choice and a lot of other programs are great things, but even for those that, you know, school choice may not be an option for, for a lot of financial transportation challenges, we want to make sure that the students in North Charleston get a great education. So I plan to work across both sides of the aisle with lawmakers to make sure we can start implementing STEM in its earliest third grade and in post high school. 
um, making sure that the relationships exist between um, the local colleges, universities, and the employers. We know that everyone is not going to go to college. However, not going to college should not be the reason for not fulfilling the American dream. And then, of course, third is we know we have a food desert on the south end. So there's a food desert which we don't have the right size. We need a grocery store, period. We got to make sure we attract the appropriate size grocery store to meet the needs and demands of that community. So I will be working with um I'll be I'll be working with the business development team to attract the right type of grocery to that area and hopefully make it a win-win. Now, in addition to just attracting the grocery to the area, we also want to make sure we take advantage of partnerships with the food bank. We've seen Things like this work in places like Cuyahoga County up in Ohio. We plan to, to, uh, to pull a page from their book and see how they've implemented and how the, the area has, has risen as a result of the uh, food program. So we want to eradicate food insecurity in North Charleston. And then last but not least, um, housing is unaffordable for many. With an 18.1% uh, impoverished rate, people considered impoverished based on the metrics, 18.1% of those residents are, are impoverished. So therefore the needs for food and shelter are problematic. So we got to make sure that we bring down the housing costs. Now there's a couple of ways to attack this. One way is to partner with the developers and create some incentive plans to bring down their financing costs. We bring down the financing costs. We have to make sure that those cost savings are felt by the, um, by the citizens who rent in affordable housing. And in addition, there could be some things like, you know, some percentage where for so many dollars given that a certain percentage of that will translate to affordable housing for a percentage of the population. But I, we believe there are some free market principles that can be applied to uh, to, to raise the quality of living for, stu for people in North Charleston. So that's kind of my five point plan and from a very uh, holistic level. Uh, but we have to attack this from a holistic perspective. We can't look at this as a one-off. I'm going to just fix crime. You can't not fix crime and not address the food insecurity and affordable housing. The root cause of crime in most cases is poverty. So if I'm, if I'm able to raise the income per capita for, the, for students, for citizens in that area, we believe uh, crime will taper off coupled with some rehabilitative programs to assist with that problem. Hey Amen. Uh, final question. You, you you pretty much laid out and delegated like five very uh, hard hitting um, concerns here in North Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, biggest thing is for myself and like for anyone who's watching, you you have a great plan that's very laid out, streamlined in a summarized way that people can definitely look upon. And then you definitely detail even more so in depth. But we want to definitely want to get people with the, what the meat cause of the situation is. Um, the biggest thing is what we call transparency. And like if given the opportunity, people go back and say, OK, I remember what you said. As we know, uh, anything that we do do. Uh, can be laid out and tailored to to find details, but there's always variables, and variables do cause things to where um, there, it, it may not come as we think it could happen. How? What can you say is your part of your transparency or like your pivot moment? Because there are going to be some pivots. Because everybody knows you be given the opportunity, there's always pushback. Because you know, you keep in mind the the current mayor who's saying I'm done has been in in office for over 30 years. So that does not mean that, that the people that has been under him has not left the building. They still in the building with him. So what is sort of the pivots or things that you would say that sort of like help yourself so that you won't fall in the gaps where like you're just beating a dead horse and say, well, I'm just always arguing about the same thing, but nothing's getting done in your humble opinion. No, I, you know, we're going to treat this as I would treat a um, and there's a hundred and you know the city budget of North Charleston is roughly about 150 million dollars. We're going to treat this as if we would chasing a 150 million dollar contract. So again, you got to remember I come from the government contracting world, where project and program management is key and paramount. You know, uh, projects um, live or die; they're profitable or not based on how well you manage the project. So we're going to put together a project management plan for the city of North Charleston. And then in that, there's going to be various pieces and parts. If you go and look at PMI 
the project management or program management institute and you look at what their philosophies are, you're going to see a lot of those core tenets rang through my administration. So we're going to have a plan which the citizens of North Charleston will be able to look against. And that's part of my commitment to transparency. Um, as, as today, you can go and actually see the audits done by the city. Um, one of the great councilmen is responsible for that. I've had conversation with them already. And we're going to continue a lot of those initiatives that were started. Um, but once I have a better understanding of the P of the PL for the city. Now, I say once I have a better understanding, because you know, I'm right now I'm looking as an outsider. I'm not in the seat. And of course, we we all as politicians get out here and say, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But there are known knowns and there are known and there are unknown unknowns. So I don't know what I don't know yet. But one of the things we do um, commit to, we commit to being transparent, putting together a project management plan, putting together a balanced scorecard or some type of metric that the people can look at the key performance parameters that I'm citing right now as I am running for the seat. Um, we're going to make sure that we keep that transparency going forward. And I want to be measured against the scorecard that I'm establishing using things like balanced scorecard or appreciative inquiry or any one of the tools that we as a team decide to use as the measuring stick to be judged by. Um, you're going to see uh, both schedule information from us. You're going to see costing information from us. But I think the most important piece in this whole equation is going to be the stakeholder engagement. So stakeholder engagement is going to speak to the needs of the citizens, to the entrepreneurs, or anyone who has a vested interest in, um, in, the, in the running of North Charleston. So you will see a series of town halls from me um, at least two a, a year where we go and we pull up the scorecard of these are the things we said we were going to do. And this is what we've actually done. So some type of like, for lack of a better term, an earn, an earned value management approach. That's how we plan to approach our governance as mayor. You know, those are things that we have to do with business owners. We run our businesses based on the numbers. I'm going to run uh, North Charleston based on the numbers. And the biggest thing, and so, you know, when I kind of started off my, my talk and I talked about the importance of economic development. That's very important because as we raise the uh, tax base organically, I am not in favor of raising taxes in North Charleston, but if we're able to raise the tax base by a attracting bigger, larger employers, that's going to bring jobs to the area and B by, uh, by fueling the entrepreneurial spirit organically in North Charleston, taxes will will tax revenue will increase. That tax revenue is going to allow us to pour back into some of the other areas um, that are not as capitally intensive, but are just as in, just as important, like affordable housing, like food insecurity, and even in some cases education. So we plan to run it in a transparent manner using a lot of best of breed tools that many of our business leaders use today. Uh, I believe it's time for the city to be held to the same standards that we hold our business leaders to. So I don't want to run in dark. I want to be very open and I want the, I want the citizens to be engaged in helping me to build a brighter future for North Charleston. All right. Well, you heard it first live at the Logan Power Show, our very own Dr. Curtis Mayweather Jr. giving it out a tailor-made, laid detailed uh, initiative of what he would do here if he was given the opportunity to be mayor of North Charleston, South Carolina. You've heard it first here at the Logan Power Show, uh, what he brings to the table. So again, this is a big um, task that is given to you as citizens to make the right choice of who you feel is the right person. Hey, again, I, we pray this interview, not only did it bless you, you learning, but also gives you an opportunity to say, you know, now I got to put that under under uh, subjection and sit, figure out if he's the right person for you. So I tell you this right now, let's stay positive. Let's keep the Lord first and to God be the glory. That's all the time I got. My name is Calvin of the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. We love you and we see you soon. It's the Logan Power Show, inspirational and motivational. It's the Logan Power Show, informational to help you grow. Logan, 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 Logan Power Show.